When it comes to looking around and shopping for used graphics cards, I've actually been coming into some pretty good deals on GTX 1060s lately, to the point where there's a 6GB model and a 3GB model. And now the difference between these two was when they were first launched in 2016, the 1060 6GB had double the VRAM of the 3GB, but it also had roughly 10% more CUDA cores, which meant also more performance in games. However, nowadays you can see them on the used market, both 3GB and 6GB for very inexpensive prices. I usually pick these things up for under 50 US dollars sometimes, they go that cheap. Now if the 3GB, if that's even cheaper, if I can pick that up for around $30, I do snag them up, just like this little one right here. Though, let's get on now to some benchmarks though in 2024 to see the difference between these two models and if the three gigabytes is up to the task, I guess, of playing any real games at decent FPS. And we're talking mainly for me personally, because when I go to sell a gaming PC, I usually want it to work, especially on a budget for a lot of those popular multiplayer titles like CS2, Valorant, Dota 2 and Fortnite, and if it does the job, then I'm comfortable selling this GPU and that PC. So that's the main thing I'm checking for, but also we're going to look into the science of some of those later titles that are very VRAM intensive and see exactly what is going on here right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Let's get straight into the benchmarks right here. And we'll start off with the good news on both these GPUs. And that is for Valorant, for instance, 1080p high settings, no uh, upscaling or anything like that. Actually, for all the benchmarks here today as well, we are using 100% screen res. So in other words, a native 1080p picture. Now, when it comes to Valorant, both these GPUs did an absolutely fine job here. The three gigabyte limit wasn't in any danger of being breached here. So the FPS was fine on both. 460 average FPS versus around 520 on the 1066 gigabyte. You are gonna get a bit more FPS because it's naturally got a little bit more grunt outside of just having double the VRAM. So Valorant, absolutely fine on both these GPUs. And then we move on now to Fortnite. And here is where we play this on low settings with epic view distance. But even then on both these GPUs, the VRAM limit is absolutely fine here. We're not in any danger of breaching three gigabytes. And it was a decent experience. We're getting around 60 FPS on both these GPUs, a little bit more on the 1066 gigabyte, but nothing to worry about if you're looking to play Fortnite. Now, of course, you can raise it to high settings if you want to try and breach that three gigabyte VRAM limit, but it's absolutely pointless here because we will just fail to get more FPS. We'll actually get a lot less FPS to the point where it's even unplayable on the six gigabyte model. So this is one of those games where it's just pointless to look for that. Though let's flip the script a little bit and look at Baldur's Gate 3, a more modern day title. And here's where at 1080p high settings, we actually get a 60 average FPS experience if we are not testing out a strenuous part of the game. But that's where I like to always answer that question of, are things going to bottleneck? And so I test out a really strenuous spot in this game. And here's where I'm happy to say that both the three gigabyte and the six gigabyte are performing absolutely fine, getting 39 versus 41 average FPS respectively, and the 0.1% lows are okay as well. But one big difference here was that the three gigabyte was using up less VRAM than the six gigabyte. And so that's one thing you're gonna notice going forward, especially with some of the more modern tiles that are more VRAM intensive. The six gigabyte having more VRAM obviously has that there, but also the way when it comes to the games and how Nvidia's implemented their drivers makes it so that the three gigabyte doesn't come into any risk of being bottlenecked by its three gigabytes of VRAM. In other words, Nvidia is doing some magic behind the scenes to limit the amount of VRAM that's being used on the 1063 gigabyte so it doesn't choke out and give you a horrible experience. But there is one example where later on in this video, we do make it choke out indeed, but let's get onto some good results still for the 1063 gigabyte, and that is Counter-Strike 2. We're getting here 139 average FPS, 0.1% lows were absolutely fine, and this was 1080p high settings, 
and then on the 1066 gigabyte, it was 147 average FPS. So good experience on both these GPUs, but then we move up to a game in the past that I've tested and I know can use a lot more VRAM. This was Spider-Man's Miles Morales, and here we have a 47 average FPS versus 39 average FPS at 1080p high settings preset. But here was the weirdest thing about this test in particular. I wanted to try and turn on FSR, but it just didn't work properly on either of these GPUs. I just couldn't get it to work, whether it was low settings, I dropped the resolution down to 720p, I tried everything. But also another thing for today's test, I did disable the resizable bar, just because I think a lot of people who get 1060s are gonna be coupling it with older CPUs and motherboard architectures, and they just don't have resizable bar support. However, I did try to turn on resizable bar in both instances with the 1066 gigabyte and the three gigabyte, and FSR still didn't work properly. So there's just something with the 1060, maybe it doesn't have enough VRAM to begin with, or maybe there's just some bugs still there, but on both these instances, FSR 3 doesn't work, but that's also an important point because the next game, it does work on one of the cards and doesn't work on the other. But also in this game, here's where we had a massive difference between the actual VRAM being used by the 1063 gigabyte and the 1066 gigabyte. But here's where we'll get onto the most interesting example of today's video, and this is Starfield, a game that I know loves VRAM. And there's also a few other examples out there too, but this one really highlights a special difference. And that is that the 1063 gigabyte, both at high settings at 1080p and low settings, just really choked out. It absolutely pooped the bed. It just couldn't get up and going. And then FSR, when we turned that on, we went, for instance, from down from 7 FPS down to 4 FPS. <laughs> so if you like that kind of old school motion frame look, then you can definitely get it with the 1063 gigabyte in this particular title. But here's where we switch over to the 1066 gigabyte. And at high settings, we still get 22 average FPS. But when we drop it down to low settings, we can actually get a respectable gameplay experience. But also on that note, FSR 3 actually starts to work fine on the 1066 gigabyte. And it gives you actually really high FPS at that stage. So the 1066 gigabyte can still get away with playing Starfield as opposed to the 1063 gigabyte, which just cannot do anything at all in this title. Though with all those juicy numbers out of the way, it's time to look at the verdict and my recommendation with the three gigabyte and the six gigabyte, because what the numbers showed us here was actually really good news. Because the reason I'm actually testing this and not just doing this video for you guys for the content at Tech Yes City, but I'm doing it for myself because when I go back to Australia closer to Christmas, I want to be selling some low end entry level budget GTX 1060 systems. And I just want to know what's the go here? Can it play those? easy to play games in 2024, and what's the difference between the two GPUs. But also if someone asks me, how's it gonna handle this latest game with massive VRAM requirements, then I can say, well, the three gigabytes is completely out of the question. <laughs> so I've learned that question here from today's results, but it also is important to see ultimately that it's different strokes for different folks. The reason the 1063 gigabyte has a cheaper price on the used market is because it's not just inferior in terms of having less VRAM and less CUDA cores, but it also can give out an experience to play some of these games absolutely fine. So it still has a purpose, and that is it can play especially Valorant and can still play Fortnite okay and play CS2 okay. And I think for me personally, that is the most important thing here with the 1063 gigabyte. It's still able to game on some of these easy to play games and it'll do so at a very cheap price. That being said though, I'm always going to generally opt to get the 1066 gigabyte, even if it's roughly 10 US dollars more, because that six gigabytes when it comes to not just the performance that we're seeing here today, but also when it comes to selling a gaming PC, people always look at that VRAM number and the six gigabytes being double that of the three gigabytes is just going to help the gaming PC sell that much quicker and better. But another thing is too, the last thing you may be wondering here was the three gigabytes versus six gigabytes, the power consumption differences. I actually set these, both these GPUs for today's video at the same megahertz frequency and same memory frequency. And we got here when we're just testing out Unigine Heaven, roughly 120 watts max versus 104, but we did undervolt the GPUs and they did go to 86 and 75 watts respectively. So if you want to undervolt and basically lose no performance, 
then you can save some power from the wall as well. It's not that significant, especially versus something like a GTX 1080 Ti, for instance. But hey, a saving is always a saving, especially when it requires minimal effort and you get fantastic results. Anyhow, with all that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the 1060, three gigabyte versus the six gigabyte. Basically, when it comes to high VRAM usage games, those games that are known to have, say for instance, in Starfield, recommended requirements that just go way over eight gigabytes of VRAM, for example, then you're better off going with a card with higher VRAM if you wanna play those kinds of games. But when it comes to those basic popular multiplayer titles, the 1063 gigabyte still has a purpose and it just goes back to that age old saying, there's no such thing as a bad product, only a bad price. And in this case, couldn't ring more true for the three gigabyte and the six gigabyte models when it comes to this particular gaming scenario here that we've shown you guys today. Anyhow guys, if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content and you wanna see the videos the moment they come out, be sure to hit that sub button and also hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in another one very soon. Peace out for now, bye.